So today we're going to take a look at uh, my installation of an engine oil cooler uh, with integrated fan and thermostatically controlled switch for that fan on my 2014 uh, 5.7 liter Hemi Ram four wheel drive pickup. I tow pretty heavy with this thing and uh, the transmission temperature is beautiful uh, and all the other stuff that you would be concerned about might be is good as far as the temps go but the engine oil tends to get hot. I mean it runs pretty hot anyway. Uh, in normal engine oil temperature on this thing is in the 210 to 215 Fahrenheit range and towing yeah, my nine, my nine thousand plus pound trailer uh, during the summer. You know, if you want to do 60, 65, 70 miles an hour, engine oil is going to be approaching high, you know, mid to high two forties. And I really don't ever want to see oil getting up to two fifty because that's just asking for it. I mean, I use top of the line AMS oil and I change it when it needs to be changed, but I just don't like that much temperature. So. Uh, I mean, there's, there's coolers everywhere on this thing. It's got a power steering cooler, it's got a transmission cooler, it's got a transmission heater, uh, but it does not have an engine oil cooler. So I looked around online and saw some of the recommendations were for the most common one I've seen was a, a derail or a derale, D E R A L E, anyway, however it's pronounced, uh, 15605 unit, which is a fairly small, uh, just stationary no fan heat exchanger and I mean yeah I could have put that in there but I wanted something that was really gonna suck some air because this strangely not a lot of room to put something uh, behind this bumper where it's gonna get airflow um, there's not a lot of room behind the grill because you got a couple of different intercooler heat exchangers up there as well as the radiator and down low where you'll see that I ended up mounting it, it's just there's no airflow in there. And I'm sure they do that for you know, drag reduction, but it just makes for bad cooling. And I didn't really want to stick it in the wheel well where it was going to go all crapped up. So so I went with what I went with was, was the, uh, the number 15450 engine oil cooler kit, uh, which is a really... for pretty large unit with a good size fan on it and when she runs she really moves some air and really does some good work and I also used a it come the fan comes with a little switch but it's only it's not adjustable and it's set to, to come on at 180 and go off at 260 and this thing runs at 210 all the time so I just I don't want it running if I don't need it running uh, so I mean I, I wanted an adjustable switch and derail also makes that which is 16749 and that comes with a little different switch and I'll show you how I got that installed in a minute. You can see I hope above the oil cooler you can see the adapter above the oil filter that is you can see the adapter uh, it's still it adds a fair bit but it still leaves plenty of room for the oil filter on this truck even though that's a, just a tr an atrocious location since it's right over the damn electric power steering so there's no way to change that without making a disastrous mess under here um, but the the bracket went in fine the the, the AMS oil filter clears no issue whatsoever and uh, you know I labeled them in and out you can see it's I, you may be able to see but it's got arrows on it showing you which way is which uh, it, uh, it's a really nice setup all of the parts worked everything fit really well it came with a bunch of different adapters no issue whatsoever there and I'm going to move my light and then try to get some better footage of the other side of it. And so from there, I ran, you know, the lines as they were. And I, you know, covered them up and tied them down as best I could. But there is the cooler. And it is a monster. Uh, I mounted it off of one of the bumper brackets, a couple existing screws that were there. And I took a couple of pieces of actually a, a chair that I had left over and made some braces for that to stabilize it um, so it's mounted nice and solid. I may actually run a brace from there over here. You can see the bolts that I used on this side uh, compared to the other side. That's exactly the same bolts that I used to hold that in. 
but uh, what I did for the switch is I got a uh, a brass T uh, that fit the nipples that came with the kit or brass T and nipples that fit the hose that came with the kit which is half inch and then that also fit the uh, the switch for the controls for the thermostat for the heat for the fan control and uh, took that in on the inlet line and then got the outlet line going back so it runs off of this and right now I've got it set where it comes on probably at about 217 218 and it shuts off at about I don't know 200 208 I mean it, it's made an enormous difference in the way this thing used to run I mean I told we told last weekend it wasn't terribly hot outside but um, Normally, when you get up into the mid 230s without even trying, it never cracked 226, and that was when I was testing it by running it hard, accelerating to 70 miles an hour on an on ramp, uh, just for a short period of time. And it, it, as soon as I got off the gas and got back down to 65, it dropped right back down to 221, 222, and just hung there. Uh, and I mean, it, it's it's worked fantastically well. I'm really looking forward to this. But as you can see, it's a very large unit. Uh, this is not the, the little one that they recommend is probably only about that big and it doesn't come with a fan. So this sucker really, really takes the heat out. And uh, I'll pop up top and I'll show you where I mounted the controller, although that's not terribly impressive. Okay, so I just screwed the controller to the side of the bottom of the fuse box and there's a little cover right in there. You pop that off and you get in there with a screwdriver. Yeah, I would have been smarter if I'd actually screwed it into the top or straight up because it's kind of hard to adjust it. But now that I've gotten it adjusted, uh, I don't expect that I'll need to do it anymore. The only thing that I can do eventually, you see you've got two wires here that I've run to the hot side of the battery. Um, the yellow wire, they recommend having it switched to the key so that when you turn the power off, it shuts the fan off and doesn't run on. Uh, unfortunately, under these new damn Dodges, every every bit of power under the hood is not switched. It's all done in the computer, I guess, internally. Uh, so the only way to get an actual switch 12 volt source out here is to run a wire from like a cigarette lighter or something else or a door mirror uh, inside the cab back in here. And I didn't feel like doing that. And the other thing I noticed is um, like last week when we had it out, it really only ran on for about two minutes after I had like when I stopped to get for gas, you could hear it running. And then while I, before I even got the tank halfway filled up, it shut off. So I'm not worried about it at this point, and I'm just going to leave it exactly the way it is. And so I am extremely happy with this installation. It's pretty clean. My wiring is a little bit sloppy, but I got it tied up enough. And it really seems like it's going to work well uh, to keep this engine oil a bit cooler when we're towing heavy. So appreciate you all stopping in. And uh, if you've got any questions, post them in the comments. Otherwise, y'all take care. Thanks.